resilience. I have four poems for you that I think have something to say about our theme. The first poem contains some advice from a psychiatrist who had much to do with my survival. It's called Soul Healer. He listened. That's his way. He allowed connectedness and worked through that connectedness. Not about being interested or uninterested or even disinterested. Just connectedness. Sometimes a stone needs to be thrown into the pond when there's too much stillness. Sometimes warmth needs to be given or calming or encouragement. Sometimes absolution or release from shame. But most of all, it's about acceptance. We give acceptance. He doesn't plan with goals and purpose. He doesn't look for answers or summaries. He stays in the present and deals with the present. The past can come into the present when it needs reshaping. The future is usually too hard. His teachings are general principles. Firstly, doing what you enjoy. And secondly, doing what you enjoy. And lastly, doing what you enjoy. The rest of life can shape itself around those principles. My next poem gives some advice from an aunt who was important to me when I was growing up. Advice which may not always be applicable, but in situations without options, it is survivor advice. Advice from the aunt. Only think about the good thing, the aunt advises. Startled teenager does a double take. In her ideal world, wrongs have to be righted. How to act without confronting issues? How to keep them out of mind? She flexes baby dragon wings ready to fight. But no. A glimmering understanding dawns. The aunt has survived many years of her husband's escapades. She bears his needs, thinking only about the good things. There's her sister too, whose endless righteousness gives the aunt little to share. Like chalk and cheese steeped in paranoia, the two never get on. The aunt's a carer, a people person. Her sister plays politics, a lobbyist. The aunt needs to think only about the good things. She develops cancer, her growth behind her eye. Her sense of humour helps her to survive. To make the most of her outlandish wig, she can always find a joke. She needs still to think only about the good things. It's taken her niece a lifetime to accept there's something to be said for this life principle. The big C is something most of us have to deal with, either for ourselves or for someone close to us. This poem helped me survive my first encounter. A prize in death's lottery. I've won a prize in death's lottery. A cut price voucher turned up in the letterbox. Absurdly cheap. Who could resist? And death is leering over my shoulder, waiting to see which option, which cancer, breast or colon or lung, which I will choose. If you want cancer, you have to earn it unless you fluke it like me. There are ways, but it takes time. Decades of smoking, years of toxic environments, working with chemicals, eating red meat, bacon, lots of nitrates. Ha! I'm none of that. I get a free ride. Courtesy of a mutated gene, damaged by means unknown. I won another prize in death's lottery. A short, sharp course in making the most of my wellness, in rejoicing with the morning sun, in loving more deeply the people I love. 
and celebrating each precious minute of each precious day. My last poem is about depression, and it uses the gentle image of a lost boat to escape the excoriating self-condemnation that so often accompanies depression. Survival will seek you out. The little boat lost at sea. Infinite bleak surges fill your view. Your planks weaken. Fragments float away. A leak or two appear. But you keep sailing on through seas of despair. There is no rescue. Not in grief, you cannot help yourself. Passive, you do not ask. Thinking is too hard. You drift. When all seems to fail, keep your heart on track. Survival will know its sort. Survival will seek you out. Joy will find you again. <laughs>